of the opposition. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to thank Sue Gray for the diligence and professionalism with which she's carried out her work. It's no fault of hers that she's only been able to produce an update today, not the full report. The Prime Minister repeatedly assured the House that the guidance was followed and the rules were followed. But we now know that 12 cases have reached the threshold for criminal investigation, which I remind the House means that there is evidence of serious and flagrant breaches of lockdown, including, including the party on the 20th of May 2020, which we know the Prime Minister attended, and the party on the 13th of November 2020 in the Prime Minister's flat. There can be no doubt that the Prime Minister himself is now subject to criminal investigation. The Prime Minister must keep his promise to publish Sue Gray's report in full when it is available, but it is already clear that the report discloses the most damning conclusion possible. Over the last two years, the British public have been asked to make the most heart-wrenching sacrifices, a collective trauma endured by all, enjoyed by none. Funerals have been missed, dying relatives unvisited. Every family has been marked by what we've been through, and revelations about the Prime Minister's behaviour have forced us all to rethink and relive those darkest moments. Many have been overcome by rage, by grief and even guilt. Guilt that because they stuck to the law, they did not see their parents one last time. Guilt that because they didn't bend the rules, their children went months without seeing friends. Guilt that because they did as they were asked, they didn't go and visit lonely relatives. But people shouldn't feel guilty. They should feel pride in themselves and their country because by abiding by those rules, they've saved the lives of people they will probably never meet. They have shown the deep public spirit and the love and respect for others that has always characterised this nation at its best. Our national story about COVID is one of a people that stood up when they were tested but that will be forever tainted by the behaviour of this Conservative Prime Minister. By routinely breaking the rules he set, the Prime Minister took us all for fools. He held people sacrificing contempt. He showed himself unfit for office. His desperate denials since he was exposed have only made matters worse. Rather than come clean, every step of the way he's insulted the public's intelligence and now he's finally fallen back on his usual excuse it's everybody's fault but his they go he stays even now he is hiding behind a police investigation into criminality into his home and his office Mr Speaker, he gleefully treats what should be a mark of shame as a welcome shield. But, Prime Minister, the British public aren't fools. They never believed a word of it. They think the Prime Minister should do the decent thing and resign. Of course he won't, because he is a man without shame. And just as he has done throughout his life, he's damaged everyone and everything around him along the way. His colleagues have spent weeks defending the indefensible, touring the TV studios, parroting his absurd denials, degrading themselves and their offices, fraying the bond of trust between the government. Oh, oh. The member of South Ribble is my neighbour. I expect better from my neighbours. Kirsten. Fraying the bond of trust between the government and the public, eroding our democracy and the rule of law. Margaret Thatcher once said, the first duty of government is to uphold the law. If it tries to bob and weave and duck around that duty when it's inconvenient, then so will the governed. Mr Speaker, to govern this country is an honour 
not a birthright. It is an act of service to the British people, not the keys to a court to parade to your friends. It requires honesty, integrity and moral authority. I can't tell you how many times people have said to me that this Prime Minister's lack of integrity is somehow priced in, that his behaviour and character don't matter. I have never accepted that, and I never will accept that. Whatever your politics, whichever party you vote for, honesty and decency matters. Our great democracy depends on it, and cherishing and nurturing British democracy is what it means to be patriotic. There are members opposite who know that, and they know the Prime Minister is incapable of it. The question they must now ask themselves is what are they going to do about it? They can heap their reputations, the reputation of their party, the reputation of this country on the bonfire that is his leadership, or they can spare the country from a Prime Minister totally unworthy of his responsibilities. It is their duty to do so. They know better than anyone how unsuitable he is for high office. Many of them knew in their hearts that we would inevitably come to this one day. And they know that as night follows day, continuing his leadership will mean further misconduct, cover-up and deceit. It is only they that can end this farce. The eyes of the country are upon them. They will be judged by the decisions they take now. Yeah. Yeah.